weeks into 2015 and on January 14, Satoru Iwata was already presenting the first Nintendo Direct of the Year. Nintendo certainly weren't wasting any time, were they? Okay, technically, yes, those first two weeks were wasted, though we did have the feminist sagas of Captain Toad treasure tracker to tide us over. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and a new Fire Emblem title were all announced alongside a new model of 3DS, the new Nintendo 3DS. New Nintendo 3DS? Granted, it was apt at the time, but how new can something be once it's 12 months old? Just sounds oxymoronic to me. Perhaps the highlight of the Direct was news that Wii U owners were now able to download select Wii games to their Wii U at $26 each. This would save players every one of the 26 seconds it would normally take to launch their original Wii discs via the Wii U's Wii mode. Seconds that could be spent playing other Nintendo games. Not since the days of the video arcade had a games company ever adopted such an ingeniously literal approach to the aphorism, time is money. On January 20, Nintendo revealed that after six years of service, Nintendo's loyalty program Club Nintendo would be discontinued later in the year. Nintendo fans everywhere were saddened by the news, though I was glad to hear they'd finally be offering decent rewards for once. You can only own so many Wiimote holders. Skip ahead to January 28, and Nintendo launches the Nintendo Creators program, allowing YouTube personalities to earn revenue from advertising on videos featuring Nintendo games, providing Nintendo receive a share of that revenue. The initiative was met with mixed response. While most accepted that Nintendo's decision was legally binding, some were affronted by the prospect of not earning the income generated by others' intellectual property. You know what, Nintendo? February arrived, and in what could be the epitome of first world problems, humanity experienced its first amiibo famine, as stock levels fell to an all-time low. Due to undersupply in the wake of high sales, several characters including Marth, Villager and Rosalina became impossible to come by in stores, in addition to many other locations. In some countries, Nintendo attempted damage control, replenishing stores with what was essentially Japan's unwanted refuse. However, much like making a barbecue meat lover's pizza, it was ultimately a fruitless undertaking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Furious collectors slammed Nintendo on social media, collectively forming the largest known cross-face since the discovery of the Moai. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon failed to comment on the crisis, as he was likely too busy rehearsing his address for World Cancer Day. Typical UN nonsense. And who could forget that whole Zelda Netflix debacle? In early February, it was reported by the Wall Street Journal that Netflix was developing a live action series based on The Legend of Zelda. According to an individual familiar with the matter, the show was being envisioned as Game of Thrones for a family audience? What? Is that even... Well, that's probably why Nintendo made a point of separating fact from fiction, with Iwata debunking the report only a month later. I'm just surprised that whoever started this rumor thought people would fall for it. I mean, hadn't they seen Nintendo's last live-action outing? I think everyone knows and hopes that they wouldn't want to go there again. Point a flashlight up at the night sky, and all you're likely to illuminate is the microscopic detritus in the air. Which is roughly equivalent to what we saw when Nintendo shed some light onto their upcoming projects. On March 17, Nintendo announced a partnership with Japanese developer Dina to bring Nintendo characters to mobile platformers by the end of the year. While they didn't rule out any franchise for reimagining as a mobile game, there was obviously careful deliberation going on behind the curtain. President Iwata warned the media, If you report that we're releasing Mario on smart devices, it would be a completely misreading statement. Clearly, they didn't have a problem with this. No, stop. S don't do that. Are you f***ing deaf? Staying true to this spirit of announcing an exciting new development only to then exterminate any anticipation created with a long delay, Iwata revealed via press conference that Nintendo's next designated game system was codenamed NX, and would be shown in greater detail the following year. It wasn't a lot to go on. Of course, that didn't phase Game Explain, who, in true journalist fashion, courteously recapped this two-sentence press release in almost 50 minutes of video discussion. Thanks, guys. March ended with the release of Mario Party 10 for Wii U, which, despite introducing Super Mario Bros. Amiibo and being the first in the series to allow players to control Bowser, received mixed reviews from fans and critics alike. The consensus seemed to be that after 17 years, partying with Mario and company was fast becoming tedious. And fair enough, too. I mean, I for one have never found getting smashed while moshing to be an appealing experience. I can't imagine what torture it must be after 17 whole years of it. That's all from me for now. For part two, I gracefully step down and hand over to myself, requiring that I step up again. Over to you, Wongers. <laughs>